Good morning, everyone. My name is Samantha Mirabal with Mocha's application team, and we're doing our design shop talk today to see what questions you might have and get them answered. Um, if you have any questions, please type them in on the comments. We're live on both YouTube and Facebook. So just type them in on the feed, not private messaging them, because I can't see those while we're live. Um, well, I don't see them at all. They get sent to me later. So if you can type them in on the comments. I'll try to check those as we go. If you see me looking off to my left, that's where I keep my other monitor so I can see what's going on. And yeah, so we'll get started with these. Um, had a question, oops, do I have both feeds up? Yeah, there's YouTube and there's Facebook, so we are good. All right, how do I adjust the density on an already digitized trademark design? Um, I'm not sure. I assume what you're asking is how do you digitize or how do you adjust the density on an expanded type file? So I did this one. I pulled this up. So file open. Um, you guys for with V11, you should have these as well. On your C drive, there's a folder called designs. In here, there, I just went to mascots because it was there. Went to the cardinals embroidery and then I found that one I saved it off as a PES file so that I could have it as an expanded rather than as a native OFM okay so when you're dealing with expanded files one thing you'll notice the difference is these are not things that are easily editable meaning I can't just grab the wireframe change it change its shape and have all the stitches regenerate because it's expanded meaning there's no wireframe information it's just kind of a, a map of where stitches go if you're so inclined to see what like per, this particular expanded file is down here, you see stitches. This is literally a list of all the stitches that, you know, where the machine's going to move and drop the needle to make that different shape. Okay. So because there's no wireframe, when I go into the properties, you notice my, by double clicking, my object properties are also limited. Now under the scale tab, you can mess with things somewhat, right? So I can add a little bit of pull compensation in the form of points um, or in percent. And I can also adjust the density somewhat here. And there's different scale factors you can do for columns. Those are, you know, um, columns of stitches, constant width. These, This is a column, that's a fill. So, you know, column stitches, you can change its density. Your walk and underlay, if you want to mess with that. The fill, which is like what the bird actually is. These stitches here are fill stitches. So you can make some adjustments here and it will recalculate the stitches and put them on there. Um, let's see, I don't have, there's some Arabic I think on the screen and translate's not working for me. So I can't, I'll have to find the translation, so I apologize. I'm not able to answer that. Um, Gabby, good morning. Okay, so that would be how you would go change the density of something that's already been digitized. Now, if it's an OFM, that's easier, right? So if I take the same design, I'm going to go open the actual OFM. Well, here, all I need to do is find the element that I want to modify. I can either right click on it and go to properties, I can double click on it, I can double click on the screen, eh, wherever. Okay, so I'm going to double click on it. And then right here, I can turn off auto and go modify the density here. Good morning, Lorena. All right, so you can always use auto density. Auto density, if you want to see what it's actually doing, there's a box with three dots. If you click on that, this is what auto does for you. So on smaller things, so stitches that are pretty, you know, just a little bit bigger than your needle, essentially. All right. Um, it's pretty high density. The bigger the stitches, the further apart things get, the longer the stitches get, um, those sorts of things, the density goes down. Okay. So that's modifying density of things that are already digitized. Uh, I'd like to put a design shop on my laptop so I can work on designs when I travel. Uh, does the license allow for this? Um, yes, so the license is a single use at a time. So one license means it can be active on one computer at a time. So if you install it on 10 computers, but you only own one license, that means only one of those computers can be active at a time. So you would just go into the security and activate and deactivate. There is a... Um, 
on the Melco service site. I did post a link where this was asked to that FAQ. Um, but if you go search for deactivation, it'll have the steps for you there. But basically to deactivate and reactivate software, it's under tools, security or something like that. It's here somewhere. Let's see, security right there. Okay, so you would go deactivate and then you go to the new computer and reactivate. And we did get the link for you posted on the comments, so you'll have that. All right, so yes, you can absolutely use it, but one license can be active at a time. So you work on this computer. I know some folks that have, they, um, they digitize at home and at their shop. So they actually activate it at work when they're at the shop. When, before they leave for the day, they deactivate it. When they get home, they activate it on their home computer. So, you know, it's just a matter of remembering to activate and deactivate. Okay. What else do we have? Um, I've created a decorative stitch. Now, if I make the stitch wide apart, there's long jump stitches. Is there any way to stop this? Um, you'd have to update the digitizing for your decorative so that the starts and stops are closer together, right? So if you want more running stitches between where one decorative is and the next one starts, you'd want to add some running stitches to get from one to the other. And what, whatever that length would be, you'd cut it in half. So essentially, you're going to have to create a new decorative. Um, because when you just start spreading them apart, it's going to do a jump stitch from where one ends to where the next starts. So, for instance, if I go grab my horsey, since it's horse, where are you? There you are. All right. So, if I put that there and that there, if I were just digitizing it without being a decorative, what's going to happen between there and there? I'm either going to get a jump stitch depending on my settings, or it's going to trim, go to the next part and start because they're too far apart. Whereas if I have these close to one another, it'll keep going, right? It'll keep sewing. So, and that's again, based on the properties of your tie in and tie out. So where one element ends, where is it? Tie ins and tie offs. So what this, these properties here are telling you, and actually I didn't show you how I got there. I just went there. So if I double click on the shape that I want to modify, I go to tie in and tie off down here, you'll see things. Okay. So the 25 points, what that's telling you for is where one element ends. So where that white propeller is on your previous thing to where the green circle is here. If that distance is 25 points or less, then it's going to um, leave the jump stitch and keep going. All right, so if you want it to do trims, you can lower this number or, you know, move the point, right? So when you're doing your decoratives, when you sp tell it the spacing, it's just moving that start point somewhere else, right? So it's spreading them out further. And depending on how long, it's going to put a jump stitch longer and longer and longer. So you'd want to modify it. All right, we have a question on YouTube. Let's by Kelly. Good morning. I have one of the Amayas with the red covers. All right, so you got a big red. That's what I, what we lovingly call them. Um, I just upgraded to the newest version of OS and Design Shop, so I assume that means you have 10.1. whatever, 10.0.1 or something like that. Um, when I select the wide angle, it doesn't center correctly, so I lose about a three-quarter inch of the stitchable area. How can I fix this? Um, I know some of the shapes were updated to better reflect the newer um, geometry of it. So it may be that the newer um, hoops are different because they do center correctly. Um, it just might be the stitchable area is smaller. Um, you cannot find that hoop. All right. So in general, when you want to go update your hoops, um, they're sh We'll get you a link to it, but they're um, for the fast clamp. That's one place I know where it is. If you go to the Melco service area, let's see, let me find a website so I can show you. Melco. Okay. So if you go to melcoservice.com and then go to the fast clamps, right here is a hoop installation program. Um, this I know has, is one location of where the latest hoop databases so you can get that um, installed and that should have all the all the updated hoops in there for you um, there you can manually do it so if you don't if the installer isn't working for you or if you don't want to do that 
Um, you can see here what new ho hoops have been included in this latest update, so on and so forth, and the actual hoop file is down at the bottom. Okay, so you can always use those. Another option you have is to create hoops manually, um, which mo uh, you can. So if you go into the hoops, oops, excuse me, right click on that guy down here, you can say, okay, add a hoop, and then, you, but you have to know the geometry of the hoop for that to work right. Um, so you can create your own hoops, and there, I believe we. Uh, is it an FAQ or it might be in the manual? I don't rem I think there's an FAQ on it of how to create your own hoops where it actually shows you how to create the coordinates and all those. Why am I out of focus? I show in focus over there, so I'm not quite sure it might be your resolution or your internet speed. That might be part of it. Okay. Um, okay, so we did get you a link on Mighty Hoop Selection. All right, so let's see, Facebook. Um, for the faux marrow border, I'd like to make a long rectangle. Does it have an option to create them using a modified shape? Uh, yeah, so let's see. If I come down to the faux marrow. So you want a long rectangle. All right, so I can drag that in here and then I can move it around. But what if you don't like that shape? Okay, and plus it's doing some weird things there because of how it's skewing. All right, so what would you do? Let me undo. Um, well, what I would do is this. I would go draw whatever shape you want, just using a walk, all right? And then you can take that and create the different stitches you want. So I can copy and paste it. So Control C, Control V. I usually give it a new color just because. And if you want that to be a zigzag, now I need to change it from a walk to a zigzag. So how do you do that? You can hold the control key down on your keyboard and then right here click on the single line center input method. Click on that and now I have a single line. Let's make that closer to 30. Okay, so we got that to 30 and then let's make that a tackle. Okay, so we have the placement, we have where we cut the shape out, hold the fabric down, now we need to do the marrow border on top. Again, I can, I'm going to copy the normal. Copy, paste. I only did that because it had a different color. And now I can change that to a decorative. And then down here, give it the foam arrows. Okay, so that's cute. But notice, we got a few things going on here, these corners. One, I'd also want to change this so they go there. We have better coverage. And then these corners, I want to cover better, right? So if I click on my wireframe point, I can split the element at selected point right there. And now I can modify these points of my shape so that I have better overlap. Holding my alternate key down there. That would be better. Yeah, I like that. OK, so that fixes one. And then we can go and modify the others as we go. Okay. So yes, you can modify the shapes. Like if I just took this one and stretched it, well, now I got to play with it, right? Because each of the, sh each of the elements scaled, it actually increased the width of the satin stitch and things like that. So I'm going to have to go modify it more. I usually, particularly when I'm using shapes, I'll just go here, but it's not that hard. You come in here and, you know, move these around where you want, change that down to something more reasonable. There we go. You know, and then the walking stitch on that guy was outside the border. That won't do. So let's fix that. So yeah, yeah I mean, it's what's easiest for you. Um, I like digitizing, so I tend to just fix things, draw myself. Okay. Jason, does that help? Let's see. What about rounded corners? Okay, so if you're going to do rounded corners, I can show you a few ways to do those. All right, so if I draw a shape, um, I'm going to turn on the grid and I'm going to line this up with the grid just so I have some boxes to count. All right, so I'm just putting that on the grid so I have something to look at. So let's say I want a half inch round quarter or because my, actually let's do halfway. So I'm going to add a point there and a point there. So I'm just using that 
the the crosshairs of the grid to establish it. Now, my corner point, if you hold the control key down, I think it's control, yeah. Yeah, control on your keyboard, that will round that really nicely and create a smooth curve for you, okay? So again, I can add a point just by selecting the wireframe and left clicking, selecting the wireframe, clicking. Now select my corner, hold my control key down, drag it, I have a nice rounded curve. So now I can do the same thing I just did before, where I do copy paste, control, convert to a control and click on that to create it, change it to a satin stitch, change it to a tackle, and then again I can copy paste, change it to a decorative, a uh, faux marrow, where's my marrows? Right in front of my face, there we go. Cute. Okay, so that gave me my rounded corners. All right, you can also um, take vectors and, and digitize them. If you don't really care about evenness, you know, you can always left click, left click, grab the point, drag it. And then if you hold the shift and click on a point, so shift and click on a triangle converts it to a, sh a rounded curve. So I'm just gonna add random points. So again, hold my shift key on the keyboard. See, there's a triangle there, so shift click turns it to a curve. Okay. I tend to just do it based on the grid so I can control the shape a little bit better. All right, let's see. YouTube, Facebook. All right, I don't see any other questions so far. So back to my slides. Let's see. Okay, we talked about that. Do you know where I can purchase a chain stitch font? I have no idea. Um, I don't, I haven't purchased fonts in s several years now. Um, <laughs> I just do it myself when I want to do something. So what I would suggest is going on Google, typing in machine embroidery design, you know, chain stitch font. Usually when you put machine embroidery design as part of your Google search, that'll lead you to actual sewing files versus just pictures of embroidery. Um, so that's what I would suggest, but I don't know, like I said, it's been probably six or seven years since I've been buying fonts at all, so I don't even know who's doing them and who does them well anymore. So, I'm sorry. But Google usually finds stuff pretty good. All right. So that is all the questions that were sent in ahead of time. Does anyone else have anything exciting they want to talk about? Or any questions you have? Nothing? I'll wait a minute or two, give you guys a chance to type them in. Hmm. Okay. All right, y'all. Um, do this on a weekly. Oh, a new comment. Let's see. What is, what's the new comment? Ah. All right, thanks, Jason. So I, like I said, I hope these are helpful for you. Um, we wanna make sure you guys are successful, get your questions answered, show you some things to make life a little bit easier. You know, that shift click, things like that, control and drag um, are all like hotkeys, if you will, that make digitizing go faster for you. So um, be back next week. If you have any questions, send us an email at applications at melco.com. You can type in on these feeds as we're live and we'll try to get them answered for you. So till next week, talk to you guys then. Bye.